Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Several Morgan County officials are facing a lawsuit tonight, including the county's former coroner, Raymond Van Cleve. The lawsuit says Van Cleve mishandled and abused the corpse of Nathan Payton. Jeremy Toms went to Sayersville to speak with Payton's family. And then I went and called 911, and uh, it starts from there. A nightmare. Basil Payton says his brother Nathan lived on Grassy Creek in Morgan County. He was fun loving. He lived life the way he wanted to. But that life was cut short by major health issues. He was uh, 45, way too young. On December 30th last year, Basil went to check in on Nathan, but he wouldn't answer. Basil then found his brother's body in good condition, but a couple days later... Well, when uh, the funeral home went to pick him up, they said, oh my God, we've got a problem. The lawsuit says that day was unseasonably warm and alleges Morgan County Coroner Raymond Van Cleve did not have privileges to put the body in a freezer at any local facilities. So instead, the body was left in a body bag inside Van Cleve's hot vehicle. When they buried him, he had to remain in the body bag, closed casket. People actually got sick at the funeral from the odor that was emanating from the casket. Instead of saying goodbye to their loved one, they were asking a question. How could this happen to anyone? It's one Basil wants answered to ensure no one else has to endure what he says happened to his brother. It's not something that you put on a high standard like you would a sheriff or governor, but they can affect your life more than, than what anybody could imagine. In McGoffin County, Jeremy Toms, WYMT Mountain News. Van Cleve has since resigned. Former County Judge Executive John Stacy and multiple magistrates are also named in that lawsuit. It claims they should have known of Van Cleve's negligent and reckless behavior. The Perry County Sheriff's Department responded to shots fired near the old MC Napier High School late today. Deputies say the incident happened at what is reportedly an illegal gambling room. They say there were multiple shots fired, but there are no reports of injuries. Officers left the scene around 7.30 tonight. There is a suspect in custody, but no other information has been released. The search continues for a murder suspect out of East Tennessee. 44-year-old Jason Dockery was seen yesterday in Lee County, Virginia, which prompted officials to urge people in that area to stay indoors. Tonight, authorities believe he is no longer in Lee County. U.S. Marshals say Dockery might have hitched a ride and could be headed back to East Tennessee. A $5,000 reward is being offered in the case. Dockery has a lengthy criminal history, and police say he should be considered very dangerous. An escaped inmate in Pennsylvania is back in custody today after an exhaustive two-week manhunt. The search for Danello Cavalcante involved 500 law enforcement personnel. He was found in a rural part of Pennsylvania hiding in a wooded area. Authorities say Cavalcante will continue to serve a life sentence for the murder of his ex-girlfriend. County commissioners say changes are also being made to improve security at the prison where he got away. We are tracking cool and calm conditions across the mountains as we close out your Wednesday as this fall preview does continue. Those temperatures tonight are comfortable in the middle to upper 50s, even lower 60s right now. 57 for Manchester, 59 here in Perry County, 63 for Jackson, down to 55 over in Irvin and Estill County at this hour. Up on the radar, we are dry, all thanks to high pressure, and that will continue as we go into tonight. Also on Thursday and Friday, as a stretch of drier weather does stick around those lows in the middle to lower 50s, but possibly some upper 40s as we wake up on Thursday. So you may need that light jacket as you wake up and walk out the door. We do stay dry overnight under a partly cloudy to mainly clear sky and more awesome weather is on the way on Thursday as temperatures stay below average in the middle 70s. So some awesome weather on the way. We stay dry under plenty of sunshine. We do stay dry into Friday as well, but we are watching out for our next rain chance for parts of the weekend. Those details coming up up in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thank you. 
Two men who sued former Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis are now being compensated after they were denied a marriage license by Davis back in 2015. Tonight we are hearing from their attorneys following the decision. Grayson Passmore has more after the eight year long legal battle. It's a case most of the country has been following for almost a decade. It's just complete vindication. Uh, they felt the weight of the world on them this week and for the last eight years. On July 6, 2015, former Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis denied David Armold and David Moore a marriage license. They would go back twice and each time be denied. They never wanted this. They just wanted to be married. They had been in a committed relationship for 18 years. After years of setbacks, appeals, and delays, the federal trial began Monday in Ashland to decide how much money Davis might owe to same-sex couples. A judge had ruled back in 2015 that the former clerk violated the couple's 14th Amendment right to marry. It's something that they've, they've lived with. Uh, it's something they're going to live with for the rest of their life. Now both couples' cases were tried at the same time by two separate juries. Joe Buckles and Michael Gartland are the co-counsel representing Ermold and Moore. They say their clients finally found justice. They were both awarded the $50,000 they asked for. But to see David Ermold literally cried, he was so, it was like, I don't know how to describe it. It'd be like winning the lottery for most people. Davis's attorneys with Liberty Council say they do plan to appeal the decision. In a statement, they say, quote, the Ermold jury verdict is unsound and easily sets this case up for an eventual route to the U.S. Supreme Court. Going on to say if SCOTUS takes the Ermold case, religious freedom will be central to the argument. The other couple, James Yates and Will Smith, were denied a marriage license five times by Davis, but the jury on their case awarded them nothing. I don't think justice was served in that other case. Gartland and Buckles say for now, they'll continue to celebrate Wednesday's outcome. In Lexington, Grayson Passmore, WYMT Mountain News. Gartland and Buckles are also asking for their attorney fees to be paid for by Davis. They say after a judge makes this decision, Davis's team has 30 days to file an appeal. One Southern Kentucky mother is seeking justice for the man involved in the crash which killed her 21-year-old son earlier this month. Zachary Mathis died on September 3rd in a crash in Corbin. His mother, Tasha Whitehill, says she is partnering with Mothers Against Drunk Driving to bring awareness to the issue and try to keep anyone else from having to go through something like this. From that day, uh, the emotion no mother should have to deal with that. No mother should have to identify their child. And the disregard that he had for my son's life. On Monday, 26-year-old James Barnes was charged with vehicular homicide in the case. Barnes was initially taken to UK hospital for injuries after the crash. The Kentucky River Regional Animal Shelter in Perry County takes in roughly 100 animals per week, which is a much smaller, with a much smaller number, getting adopted each week. The shelter has been dealing with overcrowding. Earlier this week, 35 dogs were found in a van in Letcher County, leaving president of the shelter, Tony Vaughn, and staff working all week to find rescues to send the dogs to because Vaughn says the shelter is full and so are many across the country. With everybody else having the same problem across the nation, it's kind of tough to get rescues to come in because they're also struggling to find places to place the animals because of the same circumstances. He says only about 85 dogs are taken by rescues every two weeks. They are grateful for the help they are getting for the animals, but he says the community needs to step up in order for a change to be made. Vaughn is hopeful all 35 dogs from the incident earlier in the week will be taken by a rescue or a foster home by tomorrow. Meanwhile, in Estill County, dozens of dogs were found living in deplorable conditions there. Police say 73 dogs were found in crates with matted fur and covered in feces and urine. One of the dogs has died, according to Paws for the Cause. The dogs are now in the care of animal rescue groups. Officials with the Estill County Animal Shelter say there was no room for all of them. Pause for the cause is also helping to hold some of the animals. 
I'm glad that we got the anonymous call to look into it. Um, the dogs were very happy to be out of their crates. Um, I think they had lived in the crates for quite some time um, in their own feces and urine. Police have charged Delbert Weber with 73 counts of cruelty to animals. Election Day in Kentucky is now less than two months away. Candidates running in November have filed campaign finance reports. So far, Governor Andy Beshear has raised $15 million during the gubernatorial campaign, compared to $2 million for Republican candidate and Attorney General Daniel Cameron. So far, Governor Beshear has already spent $10.8 million and has another $4.2 million on hand. Cameron has spent $1.4 million and has $1.4 million more in cash on hand. Eastern Kentucky University is celebrating STEM week and inviting high school students to campus to visit the science programs. Tests administered by the Kentucky Department of Education claim only 13 percent of high school students scored proficient in science, making it one of the worst tested areas. EKU leaders are hoping events like these help reverse that trend and close the STEM gender gap as well. Options. It's very important, especially with girls, to get them introduced into STEM so they get comfortable with it as soon as possible. It's shown that there's more boys in STEM than girls in STEM. Both matter, but we, of course, want it to be more equal. And I think introducing to them at a young age gets them more comfortable that I am good at STEM, I can do STEM. EK officials hope this week's students will get a chance to learn more about STEM programs and be inspired to continue their curiosity into a science career. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, Eastern Kentucky author Silas House talks about the reaction to a controversial Tyler Childers video in which he played a role in. Plus, you may need the jacket on your Thursday morning commute. Those details coming up after this break.